Hi everyone, Michael with Bad Goblin Games. In this video, I want to talk a bit about entering hand combat in Ages of Conflict. So this is a topic that I've talked about a bit here and there in other videos. Though I wanted to give it, I want to give this topic its uh, its own video, as I think it's really, uh, I won't think it's really important for us to stress how how units actually enter uh, hand combat in Ages of Conflict. So for our demo here. We have a few different uh, units here. We have uh, just some standard humans, some standard human uh, human warriors. And over here we have some demons. Now these are uh, minor demons, so just you know, really small guys running around the field. Some common demons, so much larger. And then we have a greater demon, so pretty big, uh, scary guy. So units have the ability to, ability to enter hand combat under two different orders, uh, our march order and our charge order. And we have an entire different video that, that covers orders, and we talk a bit about some of this there, though, uh, again, we're going to go into a little greater detail here. So let's talk about the march order first. And I'm just going to use a couple of the minor demons and a couple of the uh, humans here. Uh, for example. So let's just say that these uh, these human warriors, they want to engage these minor demons in hand combat and they have they have march orders. So what this allows the humans to do is they can move into hand combat and, and you can you can do that with charge orders. So with the march order you can move into hand combat and if the unit has uh, thrown weapons say um, you know, javelins or throwing axes or what have you, as they close in, we kind of pause just before they get into hand combat or just before they get into base space contact. And they have the ability to then basically get a free attack. So this is an attack that takes place out of the normal combat sequence. So we'll move them in just before they make contact with the demons. Each company will make an attack. So let's say they're rolling three dice. Uh, we'll give the demons a defense of, uh, we'll just say three. So pretty easy to hit. Uh, so that just means every roll that's a three or more uh, is a success. So we'll just make a couple of attacks. So that's, you know, two successes. So this, this demon company would then make a casualty check. Uh, the other one gets attacked. Three successes, so they'll make a casualty check. And then after those three attacks are done, we just complete the move into hand combat. So the point of this is, so this company or this this unit of human warriors, as they're moving in, they can they can throw those weapons and hopefully inflict a a couple break tokens before they get into hand combat, just to just to signify a little bit of disarray. Their 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 uh, their attack with those thrown weapons is causing a bit of disarray uh, within the ranks uh, of the minor demons. The other option we have for entering hand combat is with the use of the charge order. So we're going to reset our combat here. Now the charge order is is really used for a shock tactic. Now I'm going to do something I don't really like to do, uh, which is compare, compare Ages of Conflict to other game systems. Um, and I don't really like to do this because every game system is its own and has its own reasons for doing things. So I think in this case, it might be helpful just for context purposes. So uh, many times um, with games, if one unit you know, charges another in a hand combat, they're doing so for, for shock. And in most other instances, what you're going to see is the charging unit receives, uh, the way to convey that shock is that the, the charging unit receives a bonus to their attack during that first turn. So normally, for example, if this unit you know, charges in, if they normally get three dice, then we may give them four dice for that first turn of hand combat. We do things a little bit different with Ages of Conflict, and simply because we're trying, we're really trying to convey uh, morale, uh, command and control, uh, and what have you uh, with Ages of Conflict. So in this instance, Charging a unit is really a good thing to do 
if you have the larger or more terrifying unit. So if, if you haven't seen, uh, there's a, there's a, we have a video out there on units in which we really talk about uh, all the abilities uh, for our attributes for each unit. And one of them is called presence. Every, every company or every base in the game has a presence value attached to it. For example, this unit of infantry has a presence of one, as does this minor demons. Uh, these common demons, each base is a presence of two. Uh, this major demon has a presence of, of four. So uh, in heavy cavalry, or our cavalry has a presence of two. So basically, the, the, maybe the larger the unit, the more terrifying the unit, the higher the presence value. When we have a unit with multiple companies, we add up each of those each of those bases. So in this case, we have we have three bases. Each base is one. So this is a, this unit has a total presence of three. These minor demons have a total presence of two. So the way we convey shock is you want to put yourself in a position where you can take this larger unit and engage the smaller unit in a charge. So it might be a larger infantry versus a smaller infantry. It might be, you know, this demon charging the infantry. It might be, uh, you know, so maybe some cataphracts or knights charging, you know, some archers or what have you. So you want to, you want to put yourself in a position where you have a unit with higher presence charging a unit of lower presence. That's how we work shock in ages of conflict. Now the specific mechanic works like so. So I have this infantry, they have a charge, they charge in to, to the demons, or to these minor demons. Since their presence is higher than the demon's presence, the demons are obligated to make a, a command check. So that's 2d6. The result of this command check will determine the, uh, how, the, how the demons respond. So it's really out of the hands of the player. So I just can't choose to take the charge. This is a measure of command to control. So the, how, how the demons respond is determined by the roll of the dice. So to make a command check, I need one of these to be a six or more to be a success. So I roll, I roll a one and a seven. So that's a success. And I only need one of those to be a six or more. So in this instance, the demons uh, have the option of just taking the charge, which they're demons, so that's what they're gonna do, right? They're not gonna run away, probably. So anyway, so they'll just take the charge. Now, let's just say they 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 fail the test. Let's say I roll a, a three and a two. You know, so I needed one of these to be a six, and if I roll a, a, a three and a two, then that's, that's a failure. So at that point, the demons do decide that these humans may be just a bit too much for them to handle, at which point they immediately retreat and they are issued two break tokens. So the break tokens, if you're not familiar with them, uh, they are a measure of a few things. So they're a measure of um, loss of morale, injury, stress, fatigue, Basically, everything we see in combat, uh, we have encompassed in these break tokens. As units accumulate break tokens, uh, or I should say, as they accumulate, when they get to a certain number of break tokens, there's a chance, uh, well, the unit's either going to you know, fall back, or they're just going to route from the table, or route from the battle completely. So at this point, uh, a, the unit's going to have a number of break tokens equal to their presence, so uh, these demons have a presence of two. They have two break tokens. That means they are not permitted to advance at this point. If they were to be issued a third, then the unit is either going to fall back or they're just going to wrap from the table completely. So we, did, we just pick them up, take them off. They are gone. Now let's say instead of infantry, we had knights making that charge. So the knights on horse are going to move faster than the demons. So uh, the, the knights charge. They have, a, they have a total presence of four. The demons have a two. So the demons make their command check. Uh, we're going to force a failure here again. So a three and a four. So the demons 
you know, they fall back, they get issued their break tokens. However, the knights, that doesn't mean the knights charge, they don't, doesn't mean they don't do anything because they are moving. And if that charge can, if they can, if that charge can still bring them into contact with the demons, uh, at that point, so the demons are already in disarray. They were charged by the knights. They didn't want to be there. So they felt, you know, they retreated. However, the knights still have enough movement to catch them. We just pick them up. They are gone. They're routed from the table. They are already on the, uh, the precipice of retreating from the battle. Once these knights basically rode them down, then we, I, we just consider them, we consider the demons gone at that point. So we just take them off the table. They are gone. There is also another option here that we have in the game. It's called halting a charge. So again, let's say, uh, let's just say uh, the knight's charge. Again, so the purpose of the charge isn't necessarily to engage the demons and he in combat. Uh, it's really just to get them to run away. If you can win the battle without having any casualties inflicted on your side, then uh, you've done a better job than say going into combat and maybe I, maybe I, I defeat these two uh, demon companies, but maybe I lose one of my uh, companies of cavalry at the same time. The better, the, the better uh, result here is if I charge and these demons just they route because now I still now the demons are gone, and I still have all my cavalry. So with all that said. There are times that maybe I don't necessarily want to engage in combat. So let's kind of walk through the example. So this is, called, this is halting a charge. So the knights charge. The Meyer demons make their command check because you know, they have a lower presence. So I pass a three into seven. So in this case, the demons they don't they don't retreat. They hold their ground. Well, maybe as a knights player, maybe I don't necessarily want them to actually engage. So I do have the ability to halt that charge before they actually engage in combat with the demons. Now this can be a little dicey because now the knights have to make a command check. So they roll. In this case, I passed, so an eight and a three. So which basically means they halt the charge in good order. However, if I had failed that, that command check when I was trying to halt this charge, I still halt the charge However, the knights are now uh, disorganized, which is, uh, I mean, it's really just what it says. So it's a condition that shows a bit of loss of cohesion within the unit. And, uh, what, and, in, and that, that manifests itself in combat. So now the knights will be a little bit of a minus to, to, to combat. Now the danger there is then the demons, if they can muster up the courage, could then counter charge the knights themselves while the knights are disorganized. So, just something to think about. Again, a little bit of a, uh, some decisions, some command decisions or, or tactical decisions, you know, friction within the game, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. So that's basically how we handle entering combat uh, with Age of Conflict. Uh, again, this is material that is covered here, 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 you know, here and there in other videos, though I think it's important to talk about it explicitly on its own. Uh, as I always, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, hit us up in the comments below. You can also find us on uh, Facebook and there'll be a link at the end of the video. Thank you.